She's not in the uh, waiting room? No. Oh, geez. There she is. Okay. Oh, nope. That's Sam. <laughs> Technical difficulties. I'm going to go ahead and let Sam in so he's in on the joke. I just sent her that link. Okay. Sam? Hi. Sam. Can you hear me, Eric? Yes. How are so, you? I don't know if you've listened to our podcast, but the first few minutes are always devoted to technical difficulties. It's almost a, a bit. It's a segment. That's a nice tra- that's a nice tradition you guys have going. Uh, yeah, because Jen hey, set Jordan. this up and yet, up, she's Sam? the only one that can't get in. Uh, Jen is? Yeah. Tell me about your co-pilot there, Harry. This is Biscuit. She yeah. is head of security for Shoemaker Publishing. Um, uh, she also runs a lot of our data analysis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's um, a lot of fact checking. Right. As you can tell, she is fascinated and very excited to be with you on this podcast. By the way, this is BeerNet Radio, Back to the Roots. We have Sam Calagione of uh, I've, Doug I've Fish Head, Fish Head. Boston Beer. Boston Beer. And um, you know Delaware. what? I think Jen. Jen was on and now she's there. She is. God nice. bless America. You know what? Yeah. You know what? Dreams really do come true. <laughs> okay. Sorry. But thank you for letting me in, Harry. Well, you were in, then you were out. And I was telling Sam, I mean, we I, always have to have technical diff. Now Sam's off. God. Wait, I, I hear you. You can't see me now? No. <laughs> oh Sam, are you messing with us? No. Hold on. <laughs> no. Wait, let me see if this documents. One. Stay with me. Stay with me. Now, can you see me? Yes. My thank back? you for taking the time to prepare for this important podcast. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. With, with is, this, is this on some old iPad that one of your children have discarded? <laughs> Why do you say that? Is a shitty photo? <laughs> I mean, no, Harry just, just has to bust people's chops. No, no, I we all love seeing your nose hairs. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bad angle, huh? No, it's not. It's fine. I love your library, Sam. Thank you. This is my office, Jen. Those are real books. They function, <laughs> they open. So, Sam, let me ask you this. You've written a book, mm-hmm. um, Brewing Up a Business. Here we go. Um, oh, yeah, that's a new does. one. The first one is Brewing Up a Business. Our new one is called The Dogfish Head Book. 25 scratched out 26 years of off center goodness. I haven't read that one. Is that new? Well, there's lots of photos in it. I think you're going to like it. Lots of photos. <laughs> now that's, yeah. What? No, I'm a journalist. You know, I <laughs> actually, you're right. I, I watch more TV than I read lately. It's terrible. Well, the but, book um, was designed to be read while you're, you know, flip through while you're drinking a beer. It turns every coffee table into a, into a beer table. So it's a nice mix of design photos and information we think we're biased oh i'm definitely gonna pick it up because i mean nobody reads real books anymore you gotta have things to induce people to read them color photography and things like that of that nature yeah um, and we so we based the design of the book off the beastie boys book which similarly is really designed for kind of you know tour of their their history okay cool and i know you're you're a big fan of these beastie boys i keep hearing about i <laughs> I'm afraid that you're you're probably a lot older than I am. I don't know who these people. We're the are. same age, Harry. Oh, oh, okay. Now that's scary. I mean, uh, one of them has lived harder it's than a, the other. It's one. an inside <laughs> joke because we are the same age, and yet people think I'm his grandfather. <laughs> that's not true. How does it feel to be so look so young and yet be so old? Uh, it's uh, bittersweet. I guess we have wisdom. You know what is. Vampire Week week weekend said, "Wisdom's a gift, but I trade it for you." Oh, oh, you weren't talking to me. <laughs> no, you're just talking to your audience. Oh, those guys aren't even old, so what do they know? Our audience, right? you know that there's the same six people that listen every week. The right six people. That's right. So tell me how your road trip went with Mariah in the Volvo or, or the Tesla. Um, going up the east coast in an electric car with three bikes tied to the back i mean it just sounds miserable how was it (laughs) well we were still speaking at the end of the trip but we had a blast we drove from miami to maine essentially which we consider like dogfish heads wheelhouse you know geography for our brand uh sweet spot geography we sell nationally but we do a lot of focus between maine and miami as such a nautical themed uh, atlantic coast 
uh, brand. So that was intentional. And then we stopped in every state and filmed, you know, content with that state's leaders from the Nature Conservancy, because last year, Dog Finch went over a million dollars donated to the Nature Conservancy. And Mariah, as you mentioned, my wife deserves a lot of recognition because she's been leading that charge for many years. So it was cool because we could create that content, which we shared on our social at the end of the trip, but also check in with our distributors uh, and met with them kind of just as everyone was sort of coming out of COVID at the beginning of summer. Uh, so it was a, a great combo trip for sort of its purpose. And it was our uh, 25th anniversary that we did it on. And uh, so it was a blast. That's awesome. That sounds yeah. great. Jen, you asked the question. I'm going to leave for just one second because this dog farted so bad <laughs> that I'm about to throw up in my, um, and obviously she needs to go outside and make a duty because okay. I think she might just shit the couch. I mean, wow. Well, this is like a commercial break on your podcast. <laughs> yeah. That's how you cut to commercial. <laughs> All right, I'll be right. No, y'all carry on. We'll edit this in post. <laughs> we definitely yeah. won't. Um, so Sam, yeah, I just want to talk about a couple tiny things like 2021 and 2022. Yeah, <laughs> uh, years. Just, but uh, you know, I'm in Austin, and I see you guys everywhere. You've got a great showing here, uh, Hot yep. Market, obviously. So it seems like you guys have a lot of drivers, um, but also, you know, scan data has been tough for you guys this year, uh, probably big comps, right? So what are the challenges and drivers of, of 21? Because I feel like we haven't gotten, you guys have been a little quiet lately, you know? So I want to yeah, know. Well, that's why we wanted to schedule this and, and catch up with you because we do have a lot of exciting things going on. You're right. You know, we, um, you know, cycling the pantry loading moment, like a lot of top 20 uh, craft. But I think, you know, this year, the traction that we're getting is really the result of getting better distribution alignment and even working through some internal shipping logistics issues. Like while we, we're making still all the dogfish stuff out of Delaware, we're shipping some of it to other facilities. So it goes with other loads. And frankly, that's caused some bumps and some blips with uh, inventory with distributors. So I apologize to the distributors, uh, but know that we've had in the last month some really cathartic kind of breakthroughs on the logistics uh you know improvements that we've needed to make that, so that all distributors of all sizes can get dogfish but i think even more importantly you know i just got back from visiting um all, all the all of our our uh, awesome partners at manhattan distributing mm -hmm. so we finally have alignment with the bbc network in in, in the last few months we got metro new york upstate new york rhode island and Gold Coast down in Miami. Uh, and when I say our, our markets mean to Miami, those are absolutely critical markets to get, uh, uh, you know, get that distributor alignment. So couldn't be more excited, but those are the kind of friction points that we had in the front end of this year. As you guys know, when there's some talk of potential shifts in distribution, it might mean the, the legacy distributor has different priorities as they look at your brand than the one that is hopeful to, to get it. Um, so those are the kind of challenges we've, we've mitigated. Overall, brand do dogfish is healthy. If you put the, uh, the can cocktail business that we only launched this year next to the, the beer business, we're a, a healthy brand, but you're right on the beer side, it has been a, a more challenging front to the year. We're not down a lot and we're making the shift to the better packages. For example, dogfish 12 packs are up 171%. If you look at IRI data, Sea Quench has come back to become the number one sour beer in America again, if you look at the IRI data. So some really encouraging signs. Right, right, right. And I do see Sea Quench on draft a lot too. And I want to really dig into the canned cocktails more, but just a follow-up to what you were just talking about. Are there more, I mean, generally, I don't know how specific you can be, but are there more slight tweaks to come to the total distribution footprint or is that mostly done or no we hope so i mean our goal is to be 100 percent aligned in all 50 right. states and we check in with those distributors and service those distributors where we're not and and we and we resource them where we're not but you know we still want to have those conversations because that was the goal we announced the day we merged and it's still our goal today but we're very respectful of the three-tier system and where we can move we do and we can't we 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 you know resource both groups uh, uh, accordingly. 
So for 2022, I think, you know, you guys uh, presented with uh, Boston a few weeks ago, which yeah. was a great show. You guys, yeah. it was a lot of fun, a lot of different movie, you know, themes and that, that was Homages. fun. Thank you for joining. That was a new tradition, right? Yeah, it was super cool. And, uh, you know, you did the Mr. Rogers thing. That was fun. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, y'all mentioned that between beer and the canned cocktails, mm. Nice. I've got the, the vodka crush here. I already crushed the gin crushes. So uh, those are long awesome. gone. They were good. I'm a gin fan. And there's not a lot of gin RTDs out there that actually taste like gin. So that was good. I'm going to um, quote you on that. Yeah, no, for sure. I think what's that on the end there? Is it lavender? Is that uh, what the finish is? Yeah, the, well, it's probably the, the it's on the end. It's lime leaf, cardamom, cardamom and a little coriander. Oh, okay. But it does wow. Read, it does read. It obviously, has juniper, orange yeah. peel, lemon peel, but the 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 sort of balance of lime leaf. Okay, all right. Can we get back cardamom? to the business? <laughs> Jesus uh, Christ! Uh, is there a little on. lavender on the blip blip? Let's get back to the money. Part. Okay, fine. All right. Let me let me let me bring down the hammer, Sam. <laughs> I'm just to appease, teasing, guys. To appease the hairy gods. Uh, no, I, you know I'm curious. Obviously. Okay, so between the beer and the canned cocktails, you guys said on that call that you plan to get to like 4.3 million CEs. But my big question is, you know, how are the canned cocktails doing in market right now? Because, you know, they've been national-ish for, you know, I want to say, I don't know, a year now or so. But do you think that it'll ever, do you see a day that they'll ever get as big as the beer volumes, potentially? For brand dogfish? Yeah, yeah. Well, the canned yeah. cocktails, can the volumes of the canned cocktails ever get yeah. as big as your, yeah, yeah, exactly, as your yeah. dogfish head beers? Yeah, to start with, I think we actually, we, we announced we were going to ship earlier than we did. Again, logistic challenges at the front end of this year. So I don't think our, our cocktails were really in market well until May-ish. So we're not, we're, you know, <laughs> over a half a year. And we, we are at a point where I checked coming into this, call and, and both of our uh like our honey strawberry honeyberry yeah. uh vodka lemonade is the ninth highest ranked canned cocktail out of over 400 that's tracked and uh the blueberry shrub is number 24 um so we think we're in a really good place with those two and now as we're talking today we're launching our two crushes I think most importantly is we're now also as we're launching these crushes next week we start shipping our bar cart eight mixed eight pack and I know you guys as you as you track the high noons and cutwaters of the world you know that that's a critical pack for a national can cocktail to have and so we're launching that right now so I feel like we're finally kind of firing on the right cylinders uh, in terms of what SKUs you know retailers distributors and consumers want but we're still I think in a in an advantageous position because unlike our, our our competitive brethren, we've been making you know James Beard nominated cocktails for uh, over twenty years. You know with a, with our distillery. So when you try our liquids, when people do try them, you know they they do fall fall in love with them. It's just that we got to get a, a, do a better job of getting them out in the right format. Is the is the eight pack kind of the twelve pack for can cocktails? An eight pack maybe kind of line priced with a malt based twelve pack because of the tax differential or and I think in some markets it, it can and does get that close, but I think that would be more for like maybe the, the high noon end of the spectrum, which I think is more like the seltzer fighter approach to spirits base as a Reminder, those are all 4.5 ABV, whereas every one of the dogfish can cocktails is 7% alcohol with two foolproof shots in every can. So different proposition, different price point. Right, different price point. All right. Yeah. But do you, you know, maybe it's too early to tell, but do you ever see a day where they could get as big as your beer? Or you're just saying it's probably too too early to tell because you're just now getting that hero pack in? And it's Yeah, I think it's too early to tell, but I do think there's more white space right now for high-end craft made cocktails from a brand that has 20 years history in it you know when you look at how many brands are just like oh i had dark capacity i threw out a cocktail line or we're brand new entrepreneurs we threw out a cocktail right. line versus what we've done i think uh, we have we have a, a reason to believe in our land in our line of canned cocktails and we have the best you know ranked sales team in the country when when we as boston beer look at that whole beyond beer space we know, you know, with, with the number one FMB with tea, with truly the, the fastest gaining share seltzer, we're strong in Beyond Beer, but we intend to be strong, not just in the malt side of Beyond Beer, mm -hmm. but in the spirits side as well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some of the partnerships that we've announced, and I've had fun playing on the Bevy team, you know, working with the Bevy team 
on, on that project. We know that's coming to market too. So we're being really, uh, you know, um, nuanced on how we look at the chess squares in the Beyond Beer space and thinking about which chess piece we can activate in each space. It might be a brand new brand, brand as a playing piece as it is for Bevy in that space. And that might be just, you know, a, 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 it can only move in one direction, whereas Brand Dogfish is kind of playing in two two spaces, the beer space and the canned cocktail space. Well, then speaking of chess pieces, you guys have this big honker, 90 <laughs> minute and a 19.2 ounce can, yeah. can, <laughs> yeah. which is, yeah. you know, 9% beer and 19.2 ounce. Is this going to blow open the C-Store trade for you guys? Yeah, I mean, it's been an ask for our sales team, even pre-merger. Frankly, we just we uh, we we didn't uh, prioritize it until the, 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 the cacophony got to the point where like we, we got to do it, um, mm-hmm. and you see that 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 style going off in 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 the C store where I think there is some even heightened awareness of sort of the calibration of ABV and price point, uh, and yet you know in ninety minutes, as far as I know, is the original Imperial IPA. Like when we researched our book, I think we were the first brew in the country to call a beer an Imperial IPA starting in 1999 with that beer, the machine that we made it in is now, you know, in the Smithsonian, uh, no other brewery can say that. So we think it's a really distinct and unique uh, beer. And finally in the package of choice, uh, not just for C stores, but for, uh, for uh, pregame, uh, you know, hanging out uh, before you go into a stadium as well. Listen, 19.2, Jordan, I'm, I'm going to let you say what you're going to say, but 19.2 is the package du jour right now yeah. for, for everything. Yeah. Right, Jordan, yeah. is that what you're going to say? Yeah, well, and I was going to say, are you looking to uh, take that package into venues and stuff, too? Yeah, well, like I said, I was watching the, the Phil Lesh and right. the band at the Capitol Theater with the owner of the Capitol Theater last night. So, so yeah, we think there's opportunities for uh, venues, as, as you said, Jordan, just as much as we see that opportunity uh, for C-stores. And, you know, I've been in the last five days in Long Island, Brooklyn, Queens, New York, city metro manhattan and like the bryant park holiday part you know they shut down massive chunk of the streets of manhattan for the holiday thing and one of the best selling packages there is the brand new 192 of uh 90 minutes so yeah we think venues are going to be really relevant last year we did over 2000 ces of 60 minute 192s at, at city center with the mets so we imagine if there's an opportunity next to that for 90 minute people don't have to leave uh you know it's often to grab a beer <laughs> Or right before the seventh inning stretch, they can they can. You don't have to pee as much. I mean, you should have that on the can. You don't. Have to less, that's you not true. It's the opposite. Well, I don't know about you, Jen. All our bladders work differently. Okay. That's true. Try that's quit true. trying to true. shame my bladder. You're right. Hey, hey right. Harriet, why does Jordan have a much fancier microphone than you? Actually, his mic is the same as mine. Mine's just a different color. Okay. Okay. Uh, Jen chooses not to show her mic, probably because she doesn't have it in front I of her. I do. Uh, I do. I had to get screamed at a lot <laughs> and uh, catch a lot of angry texts to uh, get this microphone, Sam. So, <laughs> okay. Why do you get angry texts about that mic? I would think that you would no, get more angry get texts about your headphones because well, I've he given uh, Sam, yeah. I've given him the most expensive headphones money can buy, and he yeah. puts these shitty headphones that he bought at an airport in Albuquerque in, you know. Mm. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. the respect and lack of let's kids just talk today. about that for a minute kids today this, this dog look at it it's a, oh, this dog's only job is to stay awake during the podcast 45 minutes that's all we ask <laughs> jesus no respect <laughs> rodney danger field of the beer industry no respect <laughs> anyway enough nonsense yeah. uh, i like it last time we spoke was in may 2020 Mm -hmm. not last time we spoke last time we spoke on a podcast um you me and mariah jen backed out as usual and then um we were just talking about we were like 90 days into the pandemic and we were still in lockdown you had your kids there with you i had my kids with me and they were all studying cheating on zoom and uh, tell me what's uh, what's different now. Mariah's still downstairs on a Zoom call while I'm upstairs on a Zoom call, but I guess the difference She's actually is... doing real work, and you're just talking to five people in the beer industry. But uh, I'm drinking while I'm doing it, so... Um, <laughs> is that sequent? So, no, I'm actually having one of the gin crush, crushes. The gin oh, crush. okay. Which, yeah. uh, you know, by the way, sequent, you also... I mean, that's the standard sour. You, you know, the 
that's kind of the first scale sour beer I, that I've seen. That's yeah, we're really, we're really proud. We're, yeah, we're really proud of that one. And uh, you know, and every tasting room brewery does some sort of fruited sour now, which is awesome because it's just acclimating more and more people to that style. But ours is not so as sweet as a lot of them. It's really sessionable. Um, and when we did go into one of the differences, Harry, to your point, when we were on the phone with you, me, and Mariah, we decided as BBC wide, we said, look on-premise is shutting down pretty much let's only focus on a few draft skews as we you know as we with our brothers and sisters and restaurants stumble through this challenging moment or get through it and now there's more light in the tunnel so what we did is we sacrificed sequence draft in a lot of markets We're like let's just focus on ipas and now you know from now through the beginning of next year first quarter we're going to get sequence draft uh, back into markets and we think that sampling opportunity is only going to uh, accelerate, you know, Sequential's position as the uh, number one selling sour beer uh, in America because it can appeal to a margarita drinker, a minerally pinot gris drinker, drinker and, a, and a craft beer lover. Another difference is that, you know, like I said, in the last 10 days, I've been in Boston uh, and, and four boroughs of New York uh, and, and uh, doing sales events, whereas, you know, we were on lockdown when we last talked. So it's great to see kind of uh, the marketplace re reopening and the three tiers being able to do what we do best, which is inter interact with each other in real time and real spaces. Do you, um, so you've been out in the trade a lot. You know, what I saw was, and New York's maybe an, a unique animal where real estate's so, you know, precious, but I saw, you know, just a shit ton of singles, you know, whether it's bodegas or visiting the only Wegmans in the five boroughs, just the giant cooler of singles of all size breweries not just hyper -local. those 192s is that's the new on-premise sampler 16 I mean, the new 19 way to, 192s are the new way to for a consumer right to try a beer without being invested in a six pack yeah. or a 12 pack or yeah. variety so that, pack that's what i saw and then i i saw you know craft and and beyond beer taking more cold room space and floor space from international uh beer brands um, I'd also say, you know, just I, I did hear a lot of retailers showing there were a bunch of retailers showing me the stacks of which seltzers were getting dusty and talking about their next sets, de-emphasizing a lot of, you know, let's call them not top 10 seltzers that came out, probably picking one local horse to ride in the seltzer world, but then focus on the national seltzer brands. I heard a lot of that. It seems to me like Fruit Ford sours are going to be cutting into a little bit of seltzer space this okay, I'm, next year i'm, I'm quoting and you on that i quoted jen on the just cocktail put thing. it put it put it in put tell all of the retailers i, I said it hey sam i'm put curious it, what do you think is going to happen to that 10 share of seltzer in a year or two or three right like does that whole does that go to regular beer does that end up it can't stay seltzer seltzer right does it end up being more functional beverages that are like seltzer what do you think well when you talk about that number are you talking about it including all uh beyond beer or seltzer specific well i mean in the context of malt-based seltzer being 10 share yeah. of beer i think we've seen reads like yeah. that right being a high of that so where do you think yeah. it goes from there? Do you think seltzer like things just of the beer slice, right? Because if we looked at, I forget what what that is of total alcohol. Is it five share something like? I forget, but fine. I mean, either either way, like what does that end up just going back to beer eventually? Does that end up being seltzer like beverages? I, I don't think you know, so, but I, I yeah, I don't think it goes back to beer. I think it it continues to offset traditional beers losses is and I, I you know with us a, a public company i can't say too sure. much for, forward looking but i will say as i said earlier we know we need to win beyond beer not just in the in the spirit space space but in the malt space so when you look at our you know twisted tea what we're doing there next to truly what we're doing there and what we're going to be adding to that space yeah. the true uh, you know and then you see what we're going to be doing with our friends at Sousa, what we're doing on our own with this beautiful unique juniper berry that we found for the bevy brand as this sort of brand new you know uh, you know sort of citrus you know you know refresher thing we think there's some really white space so we i, I personally you know not speaking for dave berwick or, or jim i think that tends going to go up because i think a lot of our innovations at BBC are going to help it go up. Uh, one more for me and then I'll shut up because I've been hugging the mic. But so I know that you guys and I say boss. No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, oh here shoot. We go. Uh, Jordan, 
can you mark this time in the recording that we can can't talk it? anymore after this no 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 that we that you, you want me to clap real loud the mic. Harry? this is a first it this sounds official first. yeah do a clap like we're on this is the clap. 58th podcast we've done and the first time that jen harry has... wants to time stamp it so he can find time it in the it. audio you slap <laughs> it <laughs> Makes this sense. Go ahead, Jen. Thank Go you, ahead. Jordan. Thanks, bro. He is my bro, my adopted bro. Um, <laughs> Boston is a, they've, they've identified themselves as a fast follower, right? That's one of the things that they've said they've done well. And Bevy was one of those things because you mentioned Bevy a couple of times. Who found Bevy? Was it you, or not Bevy, sorry, long drink. Was it you? Was it Dave? Was it Jim? Who was like, I see this is getting traction in the marketplace. Like who put their finger on that? Like yeah, I, I, when we started having uh, meetings as like a team of leaders on different innovations we were working on, that was like a small batch thing that we were working on. There's a ton of those, but not all, not met, not many get brought forward. But when we brought it forward, kind of every one of us had a story. Like I met the, the founders of the Long Drink, uh, the the first to market one, and kudos to them on establishing that market. They came to a a uh, beer uh, uh, happy hour I was doing at Winking Lizard in Ohio and, oh, and wow. brought me some of that long drink and that was right as COVID was starting so that was kind of my experience with that brand and that that uh, I got to try it when I was over in Scandinavia years ago but it might, that was my my experience with that brand here Jim Cook's legal drinking age daughter I think a year and a half ago texted him and said a photo, photo of one said dad we should really look into this these oh, wait days. a minute can I, yeah. can I can I can I clear the record here? What do you got? Um, Jen first uh, learned about Long Drink at our uh, Wine and Spirits convention three years ago when he presented. I don't oh, think really? That's true. Oh, geez. Oh, geez. I mean, don't don't let the truth true. get in the way of a good story, Jen. Wait, did he present? I was at that meeting. I know the dude from Crook and Mark was there. I don't, I don't remember Long Drink. <laughs> I don't well, think that's let's, true. Can we forget about that? <laughs> That's <laughs> dangerous. He told me the guy from Crook and Marker told me what to say to introduce them, and then yeah. afterwards criticized me for saying what I said. <laughs> You're just but on you stage. Stick, on stage. Did you? Did you He's stick like, to well, that was terrible. I was like, you told no. me to say that, you dumbass. <laughs> no, I'm I sure hope he's not a subscriber good. and a listener. He probably yeah. is. Sure Fuck him. Probably, um, probably had good intentions. Yeah, but. Um, different guy now. from the long drink guy, by the way. The long drink guy spoke yeah. at the wine and spirit side. I think you had already jetted off, uh, you know. Okay. It wasn't when Jim and I were there. Okay. But at any rate, Jen, I think that, that question is a you know, you know, there's a space when a bunch of you are like, Yeah, I thought of that, I thought of this, I thought of that. And Rob Vale, who leads, leads innovation, was also a huge champion of us looking at this space because looking at it differently, like Dogfish has been brewing with Juniper for 25 years with our Immort Ale. Uh, juniper berry, maple syrup, vanilla beans. So we've been playing with different juniper berries between there and between our gin space. And we have this whole like palette of juniper berries. So, you know, we, we knew we had the recipe know-how because the juniper is the central ingredient in gin. And yet we thought the opportunity would be bigger and broader for this kind of a drink if we did it in the malt space instead mm -hmm. of the spirit space and what we could do in sea stores and bigger packages. Mm -hmm. So we spent we spent all this time ideating around the, the sensory considerations of different juniper berries to give that gin character without having to use spirits. Are there any ingredients that you haven't used? I used those coffee beans that, that, well, I used those coffee beans that went through the, the poop of certain animals. I knew that but, there was poop involved. I knew. <laughs> but we didn't commercialize that uh, beer. It's too bad. That would have been a hit. <laughs> Spit, we brewed with spit. That's probably not so cool in the, in the COVID era. You know, human saliva with our chicha right. beer. Um, black garlic. I did a beer called Garlic Breadth because I added it the breadth of every stage of production. I'm probably racial profiling myself, but I was one of the only people who liked that beer. So some of them don't go. <laughs> if we you did could just gozo. find one person. One person. We, did a go we did a gozo once where we used uh, not you people brew with oyster shells and we brewed this one with snail shells and snail meat and we called it escargoza awesome name for a horrible horrible beer you can read about escargoza in the dogfish head book 26 years of off-centered goodness which is obviously what i'm here to promote on this podcast obviously. oh i said i was gonna shut up but i lied 
Sam. Oh boy, here we go. Well, I've read parts of the book and I, yeah. And so it is, it is great. And it's like basically a chapter, a page and everything you'd ever want to know about dogfish and the etymology, if you will, of every beer. I know that's not the right word. Um, yeah. Where the hell do you find the time to put out a book every other year, Sam? <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> like, come on. Well, if you notice from, from the one uh, Harry reference, our first book, uh, that, that, that I did brewing up a business to this one, the weaving in more and more photography and artwork <laughs> helps me finish books quicker. Every book said more photography, artwork, and recipes than the, than the first two. But this one would not have happened without this. I, I wrote, you know, this with Mariah Calagione, my bride and best pal since we were high school sweethearts, and Andrew, who runs our hotel, a former recovering English major who went to Washington College uh, near DC and just an awesome storyteller. And, his, and one of his roles was being this conduit to get stories from other coworkers and weave them into this book. We also partnered with City Lights, the famous uh, beat uh, poetry store in San Francisco that Lawrence Ferlinghetti started. And we wove the, so Lawrence Ferlinghetti, his step, uh, curated the 100 best American books for our library or hotel. And then we wove a bunch of those quotes that we felt kind of resonated with the dogfish brand into this dogfish book as well. And Andrew led, led on I'm those. exhausted charts. just talking about the book. I mean, <laughs> I... but you, you can put on an album and just flip through it with a beer. And, and it's like, as Jen said, it's like a, a chapter every, every few pages. So it's, it's meant to be a fun, you know, in informal read. And it tells the story of how Sam and Mariah met from each of their perspectives, which is fun. Cause you know, it's never <laughs> the same story. This is true, Jed. I brought Mariah all kinds of homemade Italian food back from Italy in New York City because her her uh, birthday is tomorrow. I love that Italy. You had a deal with them, right? At, at one point, they have a rooftop uh, yeah. beer garden. Yeah, we helped them just design it just as friends of, fr friends of ours. And then they hired a brewer there and it went really well. The brewery is kind of dormant there. And you know they 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 still have the restaurant up there. It's got the most beautiful views. They got a great beer program, but I think they've generally more focused on wine these days um, than than on beer. And hopefully they'll they'll they'll, they'll re uh, reignite their passion for for beer. Yeah, I I sweated on that rooftop once waiting for you. I'm sorry if I was a little bit late. No, you didn't. You didn't show at all. But um... <laughs> Jordan, do you have any questions? Yeah, you know, I wanted to uh, <laughs> I wanted to talk a little bit more about canned cocktails. I mean, obviously, y'all have been in spirits for many, many years. And, you know, canned cocktails is a newer space. And I'm just sort of curious, you know, what are so you've been in there for, like you said, about six months now. So do you have any sort of like top takeaways to share um, on that space from, you know, this initial time? And then, you know, as a follow up, as a craft distiller, when you start focusing on canned cocktails, does that take any sort of focus away from, you know, crafting full strength spirits or are you able to do both? You know, I think a lot of craft distillers look at canned cocktails and think, okay, we got to get into it, but you know, can they, can they do it? So a lot there, yeah, a, but no, I don't know good. if I'll, I'll get do... the mic back. So <laughs> 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 tough crowd, Jordan. Tough crowd. Uh, I'll start with the, the second, and I'll go back to the first. So the, the the second is we're 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 playing around with foolproof spirits, you know, for new things to throw at the wall and potentially distribute just as much as we are with canned cocktails. So right now we're releasing a a pumpkin liqueur, and I've got all these non oak wood projects that I'm I'm doing. Our our whiskey, our let's get lost overproof whiskey, just got a ninety two. Uh, score outstanding score from a whiskey advocate so we're really really proud of our foolproof spirits that said we don't have a scale distillery that we can bring it into national 50, 50 you know 50 state distro for our 80 proof and 100 proof stuff anytime soon because we're trying to keep some of the powder dry of our capacity to also do canned cocktails which obviously we're using other ingredients than just foolproof spirits in them so we can stretch those and make that more the national priority, whereas the foolproof stuff is staying a priority, kind of, I call it New York to, to uh, Virginia. We have an awesome outlier in Columbia, one of our great distributors on the West Coast, who just already had this sick portfolio of craft spirits. So when we launch Can't Cocktails, they're like, hey, we know how to speak this language. We know 
how to sell this. And we think it'd be helpful to show how awesome your foolproof spirits are while we're sampling people on your canned cocktails. So we did that one as like a trial market. It's working pretty well. And I think there'll be potentially some other markets that aren't contiguous to our current foolproof spirit uh, work that we go into. And then to answer your, your first question, you know, I would say, and I say this on the beer side too, right? I don't think it's any different, which what canned cocktails are going to be around five to 10 years from now are the ones that have quality consistency and are well differentiated. Um, and I'd say the quality thing's interesting because they're more bulletproof than craft beers for freshness in general at, at their ABV and the way that they're made they generally have a better shelf life so the consistency is not that as big of an issue i don't think uh for the bigger players but the well differentiated thing i think is a, a big issue right there's just so much copycat stuff going on i think in that space and so finding a clear path as high noon's obviously done a great job of and i give cutwater great great uh uh props in as a bush and biv with that and our path is we think very clear which is you know culinary crafted cocktails from a james beard award-winning uh brand uh that are all seven percent alcohol you know two two foolproof shots but thinking on that shelf what is each what what is each brand what can they say in a sentence like that 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 differentiates them from that crowded shelf i think is where distributors uh and retailers should start to say, does this brand deserve our precious, you know, real estate? Yeah. And then just, you know, quickly following up there, when you talk mm -hmm. about like distribution and um, on canned cocktails, like with beer, you're like, okay, we only have this much distribution. We need to drive it on canned cocktails. It's a little bit different, right? I mean, because there's only so many outlets you can go to in a state like Texas. So, you know, how do you work with your distributors on, you know, maximizing distribution potential. You're still, to your point, you're still goaling off of pods, albeit it's a smaller, you know, playing field that you're, you're goaling off of because there's a fi more finite number of pods and you're, you're choosing a lane. You can't be everything to everyone. For example, we know we're leaving a good chunk of volume of potential for our canned cocktails um, off the playing field because 7% ABV, we can't be in Publix. We can't be in certain other you know states for example but we're like no this is the right move for us we want to be the higher end high revenue for our retailers high revenue per case for our distributor choice and that's a very different proposition than a malt-based can cocktail or even the high noon pricing uh proposition abv uh proposition so picking that lane and just understanding the other thing jordan i'll say is prioritizing not just pods but every opportunity you can to get displays because that 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 those shelves are just so cluttered and samey looking and with some recognizable brands but most not to the average consumer so if you can take the visual you know representation of you know your physical kind of set out of out of the out of that blurriness with a display uh that's been very valuable i think we see four times four x lift where, where our canned cocktails are in the eight case displays that we've designed for them instead of just on the shelf with a competitive set. Well, uh, all that's very interesting. We've kept you too long. Uh, I don't think so. As, it as feels usual, like five um, minutes. Well, you do tend to drone on. So people might be wondering, why is Harry so mean to, to Sam? And, and we've, we've typically fallen into this routine of, of, kind of a between two ferns type deal where I, you we come on and I insult that. you. Right. And so I, I think it's fun. So this is all in fun uh, yeah. before I get flamed because yeah. you are a beloved figure. For some reason, everybody loves you and, and they think I'm just mean. No, but I mean, I we're the same hair. age. Who's, who, you know, <laughs> who's been meaner? Mother nature has been much ne meaner to me than you starting with when we're both born and yeah. it's just not fair. Take it out of Mother Nature, Harry. Don't take it out of me. Go for Listen, a walk. I take it out on my mother herself, who's <laughs> aged beautifully. She's 80. She's playing golf right now, drinking a bottle of wine. Yeah. It's not fair. Right. <sighs> <sighs> <Just> <laughs> and this on a high note, Harry. Yeah. All right, I am. You know, and so one of the things uh, that I've found about you, and so I actually read your first book before I even had met you. And in fact, it's you had your email in the book, and that's how I first got in touch with you. And yeah. I was like, hey, I we that. ought to be friends, and you yeah. ought to come speak at our summit. And then you came, and it was a disaster. And we that's all been well told. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you, char- you charged but, me a corking fee that was more than our company's uh, profits for the first four years. Whatever, whatever. It's go either ahead. you go bankrupt or me, and I chose you. <laughs> you turned out all right, looks like. Yeah. So go ahead. it was a good decision on both our parts. <laughs> but the question I wanted to ask you is that you're a creative person, you're a dynamic person. We all know that. What would you be doing now if you hadn't got into the beer industry? Yeah, that's a good one. Um, and I, rec- I highly recommend everyone go see the French Dispatch, the new Wes Anderson movie, where I just got the newest name to a double IPA re- releasing on Friday called Pickpocket Cul-de-Sac. That was the name of the ghetto in this fake French town that the thing was set in. Uh, but I say that because th- like he's just such an amazingly unique uh, storyteller. And, and watching that film was thrilling just as someone who loves trying to create unique creative stories. And we do that mostly through our recipes or our spaces. If you come to our, our hotel or wherever we are. So I think the short answer is, I think I would have tr- tried to love to be a storyteller in some other you know medium. It, it might've been uh, an English teacher, a high school English teacher, literally telling and sharing stories with, with teenagers was one direction I was, I was uh, thinking of going. Um, or I would have hoped to have been a writer. I've been very lucky that I can make my living as a, a brewer, but I get to do these books occasionally because that was also part of my passion. So probably a writer or, or high school English teacher. If you were not in this writing and journalism and beverage space, what would you be doing? This is going to be a go around. We're each going to do this. Right. Jen and Jordan, get ready with your answers. Um, I mean, clearly I'd be an Anheuser-Busch distributor in the South. <laughs> okay that's a good aspiration but that's in the beverage space but if that's your answer yeah. actually my my great-grandfather was a was an anheuser-busch distributor in yeah. houston but he gave it up because you know budweiser wasn't going anywhere yeah. and uh if he had kept that i would be dead by now i'd be dead i'd yeah. be dead 20 years ago on the side yeah. in a ditch with some heroin needle probably in my arm with a dead hooker next to me you know I, I know I my feel like personality I've heard this story before <laughs> and i do not and i've been there yeah. even without even without the anheuser Bush distributorship in houston i've almost yeah. been there so yeah. i know i definitely would have been there if i had that train but i'm saying outside I'm to be doing state. if you had to be doing something so, Having a daily deadline is real yeah. important to me because it does keep me within some sort of rails. But uh, yeah, I think you're right. A storyteller, which is what we do here a lot. Yeah. Um, writing is important to me. And then now broadcasting, telling stories over podcasts. You know, this is fun to be able to tackle another medium uh, at yeah. this stage in our careers. And, um, but yeah, filmmaker, storyteller, writer, screen, you know, in my old life, I was a screenwriter for a time. Yeah. I spent a lot of time on sets, you know, in my early twenties. Um, that was fun. That's a good and answer. Nerd, what about, and, you know, I was going to ask Jordan and, and Jen, if you weren't doing what you were doing. I, I think like you, Sam, I would probably be a teacher. I mean, a professor would be even sweeter, but a yeah. uh, teacher would probably be more like it. Professor sweeter, but it would take more time in school to get that that degree. Yeah, you know, I don't know if I just, I don't know if I'd want to go back to school. <laughs> I, I don't think I would. I don't think I would. Jen, um, I'm kind of the opposite of you, Sam. I would be some sort of food entrepreneur, prop, not beverage entrepreneur, because I've seen how the sausage is made, and I, <laughs> I don't have a stomach for it. But as Harry knows, and he'll make fun of me, entrepreneur. I've been trying to get my cricket granola, granola company off the ground but you can't spend five minutes a week on it and expect it to be a success so we'll see one day i will be customer number zero i'll eat all the crickets you can send my way biscuit too biscuit right yeah i just don't understand like everybody in the world except for us eats insects and it's just ridiculous and i think that's going to change one day but anyway that's a whole podcast we looked at brewing with crickets i don't know if we ever did i'm sure it's been done by now we didn't use the protein but do you, well, if you, you do, I want to come yeah. through it with you. I am writing that down too. Write it Jen. down. Jen, cricket, bro. We're going to look into that. All right. And when that yeah. takes off, Jen, then you can leave the company. Okay. I think I'm pretty safe. <laughs> Let's keep we'll encouraging get- her to be a cricket entrepreneur, Jordan, <laughs> so that she stays with us forever. 
uh-huh i'm gonna replay this moment and say <laughs> okay my surrogate dad didn't believe in me i know you got this he believed i believe you're in gonna, the crickets Jim. you're gonna replay this and say who's laughing now <laughs> you're i'm the critic i'm the cricket queen of <laughs> north america queen. yeah every time jen logs into the zoom now we're just gonna hear the baby <laughs> <laughs> <Cricket. Cricket. Cricket. laughs> <laughs> I mean, you have to dip them in chocolate. No, it'll be for perfect for them. it'll be perfect for all of Harry's jokes. You know, true. <laughs> yeah. The crickets. Yes. That's good. yes. Uh, Jen, oh. build your dream so I can tear it down. Oh, that's I'm what the, you mean. AKA dream. Monday. Yeah, I'm Mondays. the dream killer. Yeah. <laughs> Anytime See, there's like an awkward pause in your podcast terry which i'm sure there's gonna be lots of over the next 20 years <laughs> you can insert you can insert the sound of crickets and it's a subliminal ad for jen's brand this podcast yeah. is brought to Two you crickets. by yeah <laughs> Granola. crickets are us <laughs> yeah oh. this fucking cricket seltzer is gonna take off and then i'm <laughs> i'm gonna be borrowing money from jen right. Right. at oh. users rates oh you know what? As a final note, I was watching Succession last night, and Harry, I swear to God, whenever Shiv talks to her dad, I feel like it's me talking to you. <laughs> I definitely gonna, see that. Right? The daughter I it? never had. Seriously. <laughs> and the daughter I never wanted. I, I know. Have. Yeah, I hear that. Is this, is this so? I've heard good things. Succession it, is it any, as good as. So good. The characters are so good. Yeah. Stand up to Ted Lasso. Ted Lasso was the last great. Ooh, great so watch. different. Both yeah. really good. But I mean, they're so different. Like this is like a drum. To me, Succession is like the dramatic office. It's shot like the office and it's subtly funny, but it's a, it's a big time drama. And it's just like, you know, this high powered New York way star family. Like they're this media conglomerate and it's just like yeah. all the it, I mean, it, just, it reminds me of like Rupert Murdoch. And yeah, his exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah, they're all they're in terrible old media people. and they're trying yeah. like, what, remember when Murdoch bought MySpace? <laughs> he thought no. he was breaking in the, and he told his sons to run it for him. And then it just yeah. didn't go well. That's what secession's about. You're, Jordan's watching it too? I'm watching Jordan it. Watches it makes anime. me. It makes me really. No, I did not watch anime. It makes me really anxious though. I mean, they're all just terrible people and you have like no yeah. idea like the, we're just too nice to go. watch it <laughs> that's how I, ozark was for me it was riveting but it was the worst of humanity i'm like is this really what i'm gonna do my one hour off tonight is it, watch the worst it makes of it makes you understand yeah. anheuser bush though a lot more oh my like God. It, ozark <laughs> it makes you understand the bush family <laughs> oh, that's funny it's interesting it's interesting I mean, they were there that's where they were most of the time oh the ozarks yeah that's right. That lake, that big lake yeah. house they had. I remember when the Brazilians bought them and they were like, what do we do with this huge lake property with a helipad and you know, <laughs> all these racing boats? And I mean, it was just they sold it so fast, the long-tailed liabilities. Mm. Oh my god. You know, <laughs> I want to do a podcast. I'm gonna start a podcast, Bush Family Scandals. Oh God, please no. Yes. <laughs> What, what do they, they don't owe us first. shit anymore. We don't, we don't uh, hold them to them. I haven't talked to August in three years, August the 4th. And, you know, last I talked to him was when he landed that helicopter in a, in an Applebee's parking lot and had seven dogs and eight guns in there. And he got arrested, not because of the helicopter, but because he was drunk and he had seven dogs and that were unsafe. Has nobody seen this story? Yeah, I've, we've seen it. We've talked about it. Why is it not? Uh, why don't we talk about it more? It's hilarious. It's so good. I feel good. like if he'd have landed in like a Perry's parking lot rather than Applebee's, it would just be nobody would care. It was an Outback Steakhouse, actually. <laughs> and he wanted the awesome blossom. That's right. He wanted the <laughs> blooming onion. He started doing jumping jacks in the parking lot. I, I, there's so much to unpack. We're wasting time. All right, Sam. Yeah, I don't well, feel, thank you. I don't, feel like I'm, I don't feel like I'm in a position to comment on, on any of that. But <laughs> no, you're, no, no. you're being smart, Sam. No, no, no. <laughs> this will be a podcast. But I always love hanging out with you guys. We'll we'll do that one without you, so you don't have to be a part of That's the probably scandal. That's a good idea. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you as usual for being on. Um, I know you're busy. Yeah. Apparently. You guys are too. 
I can't wait to see how you edit this thing together. I do that myself. <laughs> and I always say, we'll cut that in post. And I never do. <laughs> that's what people right. want to see. People want to hear the juicy right. good stuff. Right, Biscuit? Wake up, this. the sausage, like Jen said. We made right. some sausage. We, we made some delicious sausage here today as a foursome. <laughs> Damn right we did. I'm All ready to right, down, Sam. Um, well, yeah. Hey, thank you for drinking beer. Thank you for drinking. And canned cocktails. Canned cocktails. Thank you for drinking sour beers. And uh, we appreciate cereal. you being on. And uh, we'll talk to you again in another maybe six months or so. Is that all right? I'm looking forward to it, guys. All right, Happy bud. birthday, Take Mariah. Care. I will.